Hello the internet, my name is Lauren, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing some stuff outside and that is specifically dealing with my Saracenia um, where I wanted to make a bog garden and so I'm going to be getting that started. I bought a lot of the, the um, a lot of the things that I need already um, and so I'm going to start setting that up and I figured you guys would want to see that so let's do it. Okay, so there's my Saracenias. They've been hanging out in this little tub that I can keep them watered or whatever. But I bought this um, little plastic tub. Uh, um, has no drainage in the bottom. And then I have some pond pebbles that are going to go in the bottom there. And then I have this bag of peat moss, which is going to get mixed with the perlite. And then it's all going to go in there. I got to wash that out first. Um, I'm going to wash that out. And I also, because there's like little bird crappies in there. I don't want that. Um, and I got to wash off the pebbles because I don't know all what kind of stuff is on those. So um, that's going to be the next step. Water. I guess this plastic thing wants to come off now. Sure. That's what I was saying. The rocks are actually kind of pretty. Like it's got like mica in there. Uh, not that we're ever going to see them again, but there they are. They're beautiful. All right. And then the next most important thing is to then move this to the place that I'm probably going to be keeping it which is right about there, which is right next to where this guy is. Because once I fill this up with dirt and all that kind of stuff, I have no idea whether or not I'm going to be able to move it on my own. It is, and it's also very dry. It's kind of good. Okay, there we go. So my mixture is just peat moss and perlite, straight up. Um, I'm going for 40 to 50 percent perlite to peat moss, but I'm not sure I have enough. And now I've got to find a way to get all of this wet. <laughs> um, some of you who might have been paying attention might have seen these earthworm castings in the background. Um, just be, oh, for those of you who know, I did not put any earthworm castings in there. For those of you who don't know, you don't put any fertilizer in with um, any type of carnivorous plants. They grow in really nutrient poor soil, which is why they capture bugs. Um, if you put any fertilizer in there with them, you will burn the plant out. So this is, these are for my plants downstairs. I just happened to get them on the same trip. So that's why they're here. So I had gotten a certain way into my bog garden when um, I put, all, put it all together. I put all the dirt in there. You guys all just saw. And then I realized that I did not have access to enough water to keep this watered like I could kind of use my rainwater to keep the little tub watered but because of the surface area and how much you know um like how much depth is on the bog garden and the fact that it's summer and we're like not getting any rain I was like I'm not gonna be able to keep this thing watered and so I, I kind of petered out for about a week or two um on doing this video until I happened to be going to Home Depot to look for plants, and I noticed this. I re remembered these things. Um, the little Primo water, whatever, that you stick upside down, and then you, um, and then you, like, get the water out of it, and you drink it in, like, the office. The water cooler, right? And then I was like, oh, because part of my problem was I could go and buy 
gallons of distilled water at the grocery store, but that's like a lot of plastic. And I was just like, there's no way I want to like use that much plastic because it would be like a whole bunch of plastic, even if it was fairly cheap. But with these, you take the bottle back, like the bottle, and then you get the, um, you get a discount for buying your next one. And so they take the bottle back and they like reuse it. And so then there's no plastic waste. It's slightly more expensive, but not even really that bad. And so now that I have that, um, and I wanted to show you guys, I, while I was trying to figure out what the water thing, I got this TDS meter. And what this does is it tells you how much, um, how many minerals are in a thing of water. And these are really handy for carnivorous plants because you want it to be less than 50 parts per million. I guess I can't really hold it far enough away, but this is what it looks like. It has like a little probe thing on the bottom. And so I'm gonna show you guys my cup of the, the water. I'm gonna turn it on. All right, turn it on. And there we go. Haha, -ha, now you can see it. 16, 17, 18 parts per million. So this water is perfectly good for my carnivorous plants. And so that is what I'm going to be using. It does have like miner minerals added for flavor. Um, but obviously it's not enough to be a problem. So um, we're going to get that all in here because this is so this is so dusty um but another thing that i saw while i was you know waiting is that some people what they do when they create these bog gardens is they dig or they put um a thing of rocks all the way down to because remember there's there's a um layer of rocks down here at the bottom what they do is they put a layer of rocks all the way up the side. So when you pour water into it, um, the water doesn't like, you know, sit and then have to soak in. And so I'm actually going to do that before we start planting anything in there. Um, I got to rinse off the rocks first, but then I will show you guys doing that. So, And this time I'm making this easier on myself by using a colander to rinse all these rocks off so that I don't have to... I don't end up with all the um, dirt all in the bottom. Okay, and so now I put all those rocks here, and so there's just a line of rocks going straight down there to the um, to the rocks that are in the bottom. And so when I pour water into there, it's, it's just going to go pretty much straight through down into the reservoir at the bottom, and then I won't have to, like, water it and then wait for it to sink in and then water it. At least that's the idea. We'll see how well it works. I figured that if I pour this whole thing in there, you know, it'll fill it up pretty well from the bottom. All right. Hopefully we're starting to get it kind of wet. I mean, it's looking wet. Of course, you know, this dirt was like completely dry so hopefully it will not take quite this much water after this because if I keep on top of it um but and you're supposed to like it doesn't need to be airy I mean you want to put perlite in there so it's airy but they said go ahead and push it down all right clean off my little rocks on the side here where it's not wet. I'm just gonna let that soak in. I'm gonna go ahead and pour the last of this in here. There we go. All right, let it settle in there a little bit. And I might at some point end up having to put more dirt on top if it settles too much. Um, 
but for right now we're just letting it go all in there is you guys aren't really going to be able to see because you're only seeing like the bottom but this is the turn nook um like i said i want to pull this out of here Ugh. and kind of see what we're looking at so it's got a nice some nice roots on there and then obviously i want to kind of get some of these weeds that are growing in here out um just because i mean i don't need those all right so i'm gonna have this part here be the back so this is where i want to put the tarn nook um not right up against the side but <sighs> needs to be bigger fine with that oh, put it all on your rocks that was the whole point okay shove that down in there like that and then attach all around it all right and then i wanted to put the I don't remember the the one that's like the tarnook only it's, it's pink. Um, I want to put that one kind of next to this here. Okay, so that one's gonna go. Actually, I kind of want to put it like this in there and then cover it up. We're not covering up the rhizomes because they don't like that, but we are, you know, kind of shoving it in there a little bit. All right, and then, um, I was like, I think I was gonna put the flava here because it's gonna eventually get tall. It's just young right now. Um, um, so we're putting the flava in here. Make it big enough for that. So. All right. There we go. The flava's been getting some really nice color on it. It really likes the amount of sun it's getting at my house. So I am happy about that. Okay, flava. There we go. And... I might actually have to take some of this dirt out of here. Okay. The one with the really funky name. I'm going to put these, the ones that I don't remember the names of on the screen for you guys. Um, because I know the names. I just don't remember the names right now. Oh, well, that one's got some good roots. Oh, and a worm. Perfect. We love worms. I think we love worms. Worm, worms good for carnivorous plants. They put, um, they put fertilizer in the soil, which carnivorous plants don't like, but I don't know. Not really much I can do to like keep worms out of there completely. Unless I like, I don't know. I don't think they make stuff to kill worms because you don't really want to kill worms. Like nobody wants to kill worms. All right, so we're gonna stick this guy kind of in the front to center here. Middle center, middle center. All right, and then my rocks are there. So I'm gonna put the um, little June bug, love bug, love, it's something with either love, June or bug. Some combination of that. I almost wish I had put this over further. Let's do that. Now is the time to mess with it if we're gonna mess with it. All right, down there. All right, and then. Oop, that does not have deep roots at all. It's a big plant, but the roots are not very deep. That's okay. Oh, and there's a sundew in here. All right, well, he can definitely stay in there. We love the sundews. All right. Maybe she's gonna... 
All right, and there's one spot that apparently isn't gonna get a lot of love, but that's okay. Uh, you know, this is my first attempt at this. I didn't really know what it was gonna look like when I started, so. So this looks, is what it's gonna end up looking like, obviously. Um, I put the really tall ones in the back. Um, this one gets tall, the flava here also gets tall. Um, it's just kind of young right now. Um, this guy is pretty big, but I don't think it gets any taller than this. Um, so this guy is just going to stay in the middle here. And then this guy is just tiny. I don't know if this doesn't get any bigger or if it's just young, but obviously we'll just kind of, we're just going to kind of leave it. Though it does occur to me that if I put the tall ones in the back, I'm going to want to turn it so that they all get sun and they don't shade each other. So we're going to do it like that for now. Um, and I will give you guys an update on this um, in a couple of weeks. And hopefully it's doing pretty good. I just noticed this, the, it's got some nice new traps coming in there. This one's doing really, really well. I wish this one would put out some new traps. It really just isn't though. Um, but maybe it will be happier in this thing, as long as I make sure I keep it watered. Um, but anyway, that is going to be the video for today. If you like this video, go ahead and like this video. Let me know what you think of my little bog experiment. Um, if you'd like to try something similar. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. All right, bye-bye.